Hello, wild women. I'm Klein, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about riding boots, boots that you could wear on a riding trip. Just to give you an idea, we had a little post on Facebook about what others are wearing to ride in, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a visual <clears throat> and a little bit of explanation about how it might uh, work for you. So I have an array of boots here, and kind of outing myself as a bit of a, a boot queen, but uh, nonetheless. So these boots you saw on Facebook, my gorgeous red cowboy boots, they're not great riding boots. They're soft goat leather, so they're going to get pretty uh, beaten up uh, from the stirrups when riding. They're quite pointy in the toes. They're not so comfortable for walking long distances, uh, but they're really cute. So I would stay away from something really fashionable like this for a trip. Um, but if you really like cowboy boots, you like the look and you like the feel of cowboy boots, then something more like this, sort of a flatter heel, uh, more square toe or round toe is fine as well. Um, these are a lot more practical and comfortable for uh, riding. So that's sort of the Western end of things. And I don't do a lot of Western riding, but I do some. And to be honest, I usually wear the same boots, whether I'm riding Western or riding English. So. Um, so to, to go over to the other side, so I wonder if I can get my leg up high enough to show you what I'm wearing. So I have my Blumstones on, so you can see, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the pants I'm wearing after when I get into talking about half chaps. So, um, so there's Blumstones, and I think most people are familiar with the kind of pull-on boots. They have a little heel. Um, they're really comfortable, great for walking and as well as riding. Um, and that's the thing about a, a riding boot is that you want to make sure you have a little bit of a heel on the boot. So I have this uh, pair of Ariat boots, quite well used. And I know these are a favorite of a lot of the wild women. See a lot of these on trips. This particular version is not waterproof. They didn't have my size waterproof when I bought them. But uh, I would highly recommend if you get a, a pair of boots like this to um, get them waterproof, especially if you're going to Scotland or Ireland or Iceland where it, it does rain quite a bit. Um, same thing with these shoes. I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but there is an actual heel on these boots. Can you see that? Unlike most hiking boots that sort of have more, um, it's a little, like there's a bit of a heel, but it doesn't have a defined heel the way these do. And what that does is it stops your foot from going through the stirrup. So if I show you on the up here, Right. Here's the stirrup. The boot goes in. And if your foot slides through, that heel is going to stop it from going all the way through and potentially um, getting your foot stuck. So that would be really a bad thing, right? So that heel is super important. Some people say, can I just ride in my running shoes or whatever? First of all, something that covers your ankle is a really good idea because of the hard side of the iron on the on the stirrup. So if your foot is in the stirrup, your ankle could be getting uh, a little bit, this is the wrong side actually for, for the stirrup, but your ankle could be getting a little bit of um, banging on the stirrup. So you would want to, um, you'd want to have something generally that covers your ankle and a little bit of a heel there. Another option, this is, uh, it's very similar to a Blundstone style boot. It's got the the tabs to pull on and the elastic to, to make it comfortable and tighter around the, um, the top. It's got that heel, okay, the defined heel, but this is actually made of rubber. This is a rubber boot, it's totally waterproof. Um, great boot for riding, if you're gonna ride in the rain or the muck, um, fantastic. However, for a whole trip, I don't personally love riding in waterproof boots if it's not raining and wet because my feet get hot and sweaty and be a little stinky. So uh, I often will wear these on rainy days, but not so much on other days. One other pair I can show you, and this came up uh, as well. This type of boot showed up um, in some of the comments on the Facebook page, Facebook post. And uh, these are a taller boot, like a country boot. They're Irish. They're from Dewberry. They're quite expensive. There are other brands you can get that look the same and actually act pretty much the same. Um, the, the beautiful thing about this boat boot is it is Gore-Tex. So it is fully waterproof, but it's not that stinky rubber <laughs> waterproof. Um, so great all round boot for that. Now, my problem with wearing these boots on a trip, and I do a lot of riding, a lot of trips, 
is that it's a suede and you might be able to see on the inside of the suede, it's a bit worn. And that is because I did wear them to ride a few times. And then I realized I didn't want to wear the suede on my nice expensive boots. So um, I have ridden in them wearing half chaps over top to protect the boots, but that's not really the point. So, so I kind of saved these just for, for kicking around in, um, going to the barn even and taking them off before I ride and putting on some other boots. So there are lots of other options for boots, as many of you have mentioned, and you have your favorites. And so really the main thing is they're comfortable. Like you, you're probably gonna end up walking a bit in them when you're on a trip. Um, if they're waterproof and breathable, that's great. Um, if they're just waterproof, you might want to think about how, how that's going to be for you if you're wearing them day after day after day. And then the other piece of it is um, half chap. So what goes around the bottom of your calf. So some people opt not to wear half chaps. And I've got a couple pairs here to show you. <clears throat> so they can be made out of leather or synthetic. And um, I, I like leather, but the synthetic ones are great too. And if you're riding in Iceland, for instance, you have to disinfect all of your stuff. So it's a lot easier to disinfect synthetic. You can put them in the washing machine rather than leather. So a half chap is something like this, right? So it goes around your calf, basically. And if I show you here on one of the boots, you know, stick your boot in. The zippers always go on the outside or the back, um, depending on the make of the half chap, so that they're not interfering with the stirrups. So it goes around your boot. I'm not gonna do it all the way up here, but you get the idea. And it makes your short boots into taller boots. And uh, so some people don't, they might, don't mind riding without tap, half chaps. I really like half chaps and there's a few reasons. So one reason is most riding pants are skinny at the bottom and most people wear their socks over or um, you can wear them under as well, but they're skinny. So if I'm on a trip and I'm wearing half, if I'm not wearing half taps with short boots, then what happens is dirt and rocks and stuff start going in my boots and I hate that feeling and I'm always trying to get them out when they're in there. So I prefer half chaps to keep the rocks and stones out, but then there's another really good reason to wear half chaps, and that is to protect your inner calf. So this is an English saddle here. This is my saddle. And English saddles have these leathers that hold the stirrup, the stirrup irons, and there's two pieces to it. I mean, it's one piece, but it doubles back on itself. And when you're riding, this is probably kind of hard to see and bring it closer to the camera here. When you're riding, this this can this uh, strap can kind of move around and pinch your calf in there, and it's really not very nice or comfortable. So I like to wear half chaps to keep my keep my calves happy and to um, keep the rocks and the stones and stuff out of my out of my boots. And then, and so hmm, I brought uh, I brought a full chaps as well to show you. Not uh, not something you're probably going to need on a trip, but a full set of chaps goes. There's one side for each leg, and then it goes around your waist. These are leather. You can also get them in other materials. I think Gore-Tex as well. And the nice thing about half chaps is they also they protect your inner leg, but they also keep you really warm. Um, so I've used these on trips in Iceland because it can be sometimes a little bit chilly there, especially towards the end of the season. Um, and it, and it keeps you quite warm. Now, if you are riding in the rain, uh, it'll keep your legs warm, but <laughs> what happens with the rain is it collects on the saddle and it goes down to the lowest part of the saddle, which is where your crotch is. And <laughs> so they're not going to protect your crotch from the rain. And, and trust me, I have been on trips where it's pouring rain and all of a sudden, I feel all that water just sink to the middle of the saddle. I'm like, oh, crotch crease. So uh, crotch freeze, crotch crease, crotch freeze. <laughs> so um, I recommend if you're riding in the rain to, to skip the half taps and go for rain pants. It's gonna keep you a lot more comfortable. So riding pants, so not all riding pants are going to be conducive to using half taps. 
Um, with jeans, you can kind of roll your jeans up or tuck them in your socks or your boots and put half chaps around them. Um, and that works really well. Some people who are riding in jeans actually um, don't, don't bother with half chaps because the, the jeans go over the boots. You don't get the issue of rocks and stuff in your boots. So, um, and in a Western saddle, the stirrups are different. So they're a flat, smoother piece of leather and they don't have that possibility of pinching. So a lot of Western riders don't bother with the half chaps. They just wear jeans over the boots and that's fine. As long as those, um, the seams on your jeans, the inner thighs aren't gonna bother your legs, then jeans are fine to ride in. Personally, I don't really like riding in jeans because I'm sensitive to those seams. So I like a pair of pants that don't have seams. So I brought a few pairs of pants to show you as well. Just a few pairs of pants here. So I, first of all, like to wear underneath my riding pants, a pair of long wool socks. These socks come up to my knees and they just smooth out everything underneath my pants so that um, I'm not feeling ridges from my socks. I want them nice and high, um, right up to my knee. So, and then this style of riding pant here, these still have the tag on. I've had these pants for years and I don't wear them, but they're great pants. Some, I have too many pairs is really bottom line. Uh, but this, this pair I wanted to show you, it's narrow at the bottom. It's got a bit of Velcro to hold it down. And then you would, with these, this type of pants, you would wear uh, either a tall boot, so to cover the, the tight bottoms, or a short boot with a half chap would be best. Again, you can skip the half chap, but I don't recommend that. Um, the other thing about these pants is they don't have any extra padding or anything. They're just tight, straight pants. They have a little bit of a little bit of a patch in the inner knee to uh, protect your knee from rubbing against the uh, the saddle. But other than that, they don't they don't have a lot of bells and whistles. Maybe that's why I have not worn them. But uh, I think they're really cute. I don't know if you can tell. They're kind of a a gray plaidish kind of thing and. Maybe I'll wear them for Christmas or something. <laughs> so another type is very similar. This one doesn't have the Velcro at the bottom. It's, it's got more of a, a little bit of elastic to hold it tight around the bottom. Again, I would wear these with half chaps and short boots for the most part. The difference with these is they have what I call a sticky bum. So they have this suede patch that goes under your crotch, around your bum, down your legs, all the way to um, to sort of mid calf, where you would where then your half chops would protect you. So I really like the uh, the sticky part, so it makes me not slide around so much in the saddle. Um, if I'm jumping, I don't like so much the sticky like <laughs> kind of get stuck to the saddle. But um, but in general, I I like the the full seat. It's called a full seat pant. Um, so there's that version of it, and then there's this version which is uh, just a little bit different in the padding, more square and it's got some breaks in the padding so that the material will stretch with your legs. Uh, this is a, a nice pair of carrots is the uh, brand. And these are super comfortable, nice lightweight after the summer. So I really like those. And then I have a couple of these European riding pants, which I love, very expensive. And I don't know if you can get them in Canada, these ones. I bought in Iceland. So the beautiful thing about these pants is they have half chaps built in. So again, I don't know if you can see this with the light, but from basically the upper middle of your thigh down to your foot is this suede patch. Otherwise, these pants are kind of a soft shell fleece lined, really warm and cozy for the winter. And they have a zipper that uh, does up and does in the bottom. And it's just a little gusset here. And then inside, there's a little strap. So the strap goes under your foot. And this does up over your boot. And then you've got half chaps built in. So this going over your boot protects you from getting all the rocks and stones in your boot. And then the patch on the inner calf, inner knee, um, helps to protect you from chafing against the saddle. 
So these are, are one of my favorite pair. This one doesn't have sticky bum. <laughs> it's just got the inner thighs. So of course I have another pair because now I'm outing myself as the breeches queen as well as the boot queen. I have another pair with a full seat. So I don't know. Again, it's a bit hard with the light to see exactly what's going on, but they have the full sticky bum and it goes all the way down to the bottom. These ones don't have, um, they don't have any zippers at the bottom, but they still have this nice flap to go underneath your foot inside your boot. I, I wear it inside my boot, the flap underneath my foot. Some people wear it outside, but I like it inside because the pant covers it all. And then that, that flappy part doesn't get all muddy outside. Um, so I'm going to step back from the camera and I'm going to show you my outfit because I'm wearing a pair of these pants with the built-in half chaps and I've got my, my riding boots on so you can see what it looks like on an actual body, all right? So from back here, I've got my little zippers here and the gusset inside. And I've got my bloodstone boots. And then underneath, there is this lovely strap under my foot. And without that strap, I can tell you that, and I've had this happen with other pants that are, are looser at the bottom. Um, rain pants, for instance, do this quite a bit. Riding along and your pants just start riding up, riding up, riding up, and then you've got bare calves. Uh, so not, uh, not very pleasant for riding. So, oh, I wanted to show you one other pair of half caps here which is a stiffer pair that are made of leather. They're all leather. These ones are partially leather and partially a kind of mesh, you can sort of see through. And these, these ones are great in summer because they're not as hot. The other ones are better in the winter because the full leather is a lot warmer. So I have some for every season. Uh, so short boots or tall boots, doesn't matter, but you wanna think about um, how you're going to be, what, what kind of train you're going to be going over, making sure that your boots are comfortable and then asking yourself, do I, do I need half chaps? Is that going to be helpful for me or not? And depending on the pair of pants that you wear, half chaps may or not, may or may not be that useful. And of course, depending on the saddle that you're using. So I hope that little tutorial about boots and half chaps and a little bit about pants is helpful. Please, uh, if you have questions or you have more insight to share, because I know that many of you have way more experience riding than I do, and you may have little tidbits to share about uh, what you do with your lower body <laughs> when you're riding, and would love to hear from you. Merry Christmas, everyone, and have a lovely holiday, and uh, maybe use some of your, your Christmas uh, gift cards to purchase whatever you might need to be a very happy, comfortable rider this year.